All right, so we are on part two of the glitter beach tumbler. Doing my take on how to do it easiest. Um, you're more than welcome to do it whichever way that you seem fit or use whatever colors that work better for you. I know a lot of people that use Mod Podge. I know a lot of people that use the um, epoxy method. None of the methods are wrong. It's whatever is easier for you, whatever works for you. Um, the reason why I do the adhesive is because I feel like it works a little bit easier to be able to put the colors on in a thin layer and still be able to work with it. So I did the white when we were in our last video. I'm just going to put a little bit more white on the rim of it. And when we do the second layer, we can put white into the water as well. Just getting that where the glitter or where the water comes up on the beach basically for now. And now we are going to do the sand glitter mix. I put the dollar store sand in there and I have dust in the wind from Glitterazzi inside there as well. I was going to just use the dust in the wind, but I thought there was such <coughs> enough shimmer bling bling on the cup then I thought I would just kind of put more of a beach look in there so what we'll do is we'll just shake it on I've never used this on a cup yet so I can't guarantee how it will stick but we will be doing a couple of coats. So if it doesn't stick all the way the first time, we'll make sure to do the sand first the second time to make sure that the adhesive hasn't started its setting process. This part you don't have to really wear the gloves unless if um, you're touching the adhesive but the sand and glitter mix is thick enough to where I haven't touched the adhesive. But if you wanted to wear your gloves at this point, you can definitely do so. I just recommend changing them before you start your epoxy process. I actually really like the way that this is turning out. You can really see the glitter shine, but then the sand gives it a little bit of texture. And looking at this cup, it really makes me wish that instead of our spring weather, we had some summer weather. Or that I was down in Texas visiting my mom. We all love the beach, but I do have one friend that would rather it be cold and snowy than have it beach weather. I still love her. <laughs> All right, so that is fully covered. If you see some big spots, you know, just shake it down a little bit. We will be redoing th this. So if not, and not a whole lot stays, we'll try it again. Um, again, I uh, never used this textured sand before. I did get it from the dollar store and I thought it was kind of neat and wanted to try it out. So, okay. 
So it still sparkles like the rest of the cup, but it has a little bit of texture to it. I am going to dump this back in my cup. definitely blingy. I can't wait to see it in the sun with the epoxy on it. So it's a little wet yet. We'll let it dry for a bit before we go back out and spray more adhesive on it. Um, I just want to show you guys kind of what I'm using today. I am going to do the sticker that I found at, I believe, Michael's. Let's see. And it's got a little bit of a sand <laughs> texture to it. Are you okay? It's got a little bit of a sand texture to it. Um, that's why I thought it would be kind of fun to use the dollar store sand to add texture to the cup. <laughs> So when we put it on there, it kind of all flows together, okay? So what I'm going to do now, and this is a um, trick that you guys can use if you like it. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. I've had lots of good things come from this and lots of bad things come from this. Now remember, I put this A, which is my hardener, into um, hot water so it squeezes out easier. Normally, it would be harder to squeeze out if you didn't have it in something warm. It also takes away a lot of the little bubbles, micro bubbles, big bubbles, all of that. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to just going to just set this on my candle warmer. It's been used and abused for many, many years, and maybe let's see there we go it's almost done it's almost done being used and abused um, I have also seen people use the Scentsy warmers that don't have a light bulb in it I also have one of those but I love it and I don't want to abuse it yet so I'll keep that upstairs making my room smell good so we did the A, well this is A for me, which in my Pro Marines, it has A and B product. So I labeled mine of what is in the jug. You can see this one's the hardener, sorry about earlier. This B is my um, Pro Marines hardener, A is not. But I'm going to stick A back in the warm water to keep that um, nice and liquidy. And as you've seen, B is plenty liquidy, so we don't have to do anything with that and stick it in the water. Um, I do have to say, I already can kind of eye my measurements, but I still use the side measurements as well. And um, you have to have your epoxy completely measured correctly. Otherwise, it is either not going to set up going to be sticky. Some people try to put extra hardener in there so then they have, um, they think that it's going to get harder quicker. It's not, that's not the case. Um, I've had a couple of times where I was chatting on the phone and I mixed my epoxy and didn't give it quite the right measurements. I was unsure if it was going to work. If for some reason you feel like it's not going to work, I wouldn't use it. If you think that you didn't mix it right, don't put it on your tumbler. Because if it doesn't cure, you have to strip it. You can't put more epoxy over it and try to cover that up. The reason being is that it creates a moisture in there and you don't want your resident, sorry, I work with elders in my full-time job. You don't want your customers to, um, get sick or have a cup issue, um, try to go with good reviews the whole time. 
like I said, I'm, I'm newer at this. So I'm, I watch everybody else's videos and kind of go by what they, what they say and then add my own little twist to it. I'm just trying to make things a little bit easier as a full-time worker, a full-time mom, and now a full-time tumbler maker. So, um, if you guys have any questions about this part, please leave comments. I will definitely uh, respond back to you as soon as I get them. Um, if I don't know the question, I will call or I will check with somebody else that I know that does cups right around here, and we will try to work together to get your answer question answered. Okay, so we're going to let this dry for a little bit longer here. <coughs> I swear to y'all, he is medicated. We just were at the Minute Clinic today, and he does have medication. So he sounds like he's dying, but I promise you, if he is, it's not because he doesn't have his meds. Okay? So, can you still see? Sorry, my little clamp that is holding up my phone doesn't work all that great sometimes. So we have our little bit of our mixture of the sparkling sapphire and the ocean mist. We still want to keep that to the side because after our second coat of spray, we are going to go back in and add more along the edges of here so then we can get a more softer blend. You can also use that tip if you're doing ombres as well. I always just use a little bit of the dark and more of the light so it doesn't overpower. I have a lot of people that I watch on YouTube and um, when I come across those tips it's kind of nice because when you're new, you get a little overwhelmed at trying to make the, the cup perfect, whether you're making it right away for your family or your friends, or uh, if you're anything like me, I made one for a friend and had customers ordering within that same week because they seen my work on Snapchat. So um, I kind of went right on in and um, started making cups. So when I'm making cups, I actually watch tutorials on other cups that I would be interested in making. Um, it's kind of nice. Um, you kind of have a Facebook group that you can talk with also. So that's so why I said that if you have any questions, just feel free to leave it in the comments. And I will definitely try to get you answered as quickly as I can. So I have my epoxy over here on the warmer and if you can see most of all of the little micro bubbles are gone from the inside there. Sorry if you can't, there you go. There's a few but the longer that you have it sit there and wait the more the bubbles will disappear. Now. As you have seen, I did not mix my A and B together. My A is sitting on the warmer and my B is down here. I have done it a few times after I get done mixing and I have a couple micro bubbles, I will stick it on the warmer for just a few seconds. When I first started this, um, I wasn't I wasn't great and I'm not still great, so I'm kind of glad that we're learning together, but um, I stuck the mixed parts together onto the warmer and I went into where I have my cups turning and I came back out and it was a puddle, an absolute puddle on my floor actually. And so now I know that you can keep the A or your, uh, what would this call? It just says tabletop 
um, epoxy for what my A is, but B is the hardener. So if you were to just keep A on there by itself, it won't harden without the B. So um, you can keep that together or separate, and then we'll pour it into the four ounce cup and mix it up together. And if you have a couple of micro bubbles on there, then you stick it on there for a few seconds just to let the heat get in there and you're good to go. This also makes it so it's a lot easier to clean out your measuring cup and also a lot easier to stir to where you don't get a whole ton of micro bubbles. Now, if you're doing a lot of projects within the few days of each other, I've kept some of these. They're not expensive, but when you're doing enough cups during the day, it's kind of nice just to keep them. As long as they're not mixed together in the measuring cups, you are more than able to keep them. You can rinse them out. You can keep them. I put something on mine so then I know that this is A. This is the cup that I can't mix anything but A in. I can't put anything but A in this cup to measure it out in. Um, I had a little scrap piece of paper, so I put that on there, or a vinyl, and then I have my B. So that's if you use, or if you're making a lot of cups and you need to measure more. I only measure enough to make a few cups at a time. If I think I need to make more then I just make up some more epoxy. There's no reason to let it get hard. I would rather go through the time to mix it up than have it get hard on me and then it go to waste. And if you ever have extra that you don't really know what to do with, um, if you spend a few dollars, you can get some molds, uh, silicone molds. I got this from Resin Queen on Etsy. Absolutely love this uh, mold. My son absolutely loves it. Anytime people come over, he is showing them what you can make out of it. I'll show you a couple of examples here. This is what they make. And this is just extra leftover epoxy. And it doesn't always have to be the same day epoxy. Um, this one, you can see there's a line. And so some of this epoxy was poured one day, and then some of this clear epoxy was poured on a different day when um, I had a little bit of extra. Okay, you can do glitters. If you have just clear and you want to add glitter, feel free to do so. What I do is, if I know I'm going to have extra, I just coat the little bit of this, put a little bit of glitter in there, and then, then it is, sits on the top. It's kind of neat. These are fun for trinkets. Um, I uh, sometimes put my uh, my epoxy in them while they're sitting on the desk, so I can't. It's not easily tippable. I'm accident prone, so anything that helps me not spill. But okay, so that's what I make with my extra resins. With that, then I also oops, excuse me. I also got a couple of fun little unicorn ones and some hive because well who wouldn't want some honeycomb hives when you're the queen bee right so we have that and now I feel like we should be able to spray the cup again so we'll just take that while our epoxy is still warming and A is there, B is here. We will go out into the garage and respray the cup so we can have a thicker layer on the cup so it's not so see-through. And that's why it's kind of nice to be able to have your um, base color underneath so you're not going through so much glitter also. I did, also, I did have a base color, but it looks like I didn't do the blue dark enough. So um, I'm going to upload part number two and I will be back with part number three because I can only do uh, 20 minute videos at a time. So if you think this is helpful at all, um, please like this video. You can also subscribe and if you hit the little bell, 
it will let you know when I upload more videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on part three.